Pulse Chain is a new blockchain created by forking the Ethereum blockchain and changing some of its code, making it faster and cheaper to transact on. It will be the largest free airdrop in history as every token on the Ethereum blockchain is being copied over as well. These tokens will be waiting in your wallet for you to switch networks. By the time you're watching this video, they might already be there. Richard Hart, the founder of Pulse Chain, is rumored to be a self-made billionaire who aims to be the king of crypto. In 2019, he created a decentralized application called Hex, where you can hardlock Hex tokens in order to earn yield. It was a blasting success as the price went up 10,000-fold in less than two years. It's been running on the Ethereum blockchain flawlessly for over three years, and due to its immutable code, it will be for many more years to come. Though, it must be said that Ethereum has been far from ideal for Hex and many other dApps to be utilized. Welcome to Crypto Hexplained, the easiest way to educate yourself on a ride around the blockchain. Here we try to explain crypto topics as simply as possible so everyone can understand. In this video, we'll go over Pulse Chain and how it's helping Ethereum to carry the load. As always, no financial advice on this channel. I'm just gathering the facts so my lazy friends don't have to. Ethereum is the biggest programmable blockchain out there. In contrast to Bitcoin, you can use it for lots of different digital assets and for building decentralized applications. Thousands of dApps have been developed on Ethereum, making it the most popular blockchain at the moment. Though, since the last bull cycle, Ethereum appeared to be far from optimized for mass adoption. Due to the large demand on the blockchain, gas fees are often out of control, causing several gaming and DeFi applications to be not worth utilizing. At the peak of the bull, fees for ending hex stakes could run up to $500 or more. Ridiculous. Ethereum became a victim to its own success. Many people had hoped that a transition from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake would reduce gas fees in addition to eliminating the pollution caused by mining. But obviously, this wasn't the case. Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, is seeking to resolve this issue by something called sharding and rollups. Sharding is when a blockchain is split into several smaller pieces, each being processed by a different group of computers. Rollups, on the other hand, is where multiple transactions are being compressed into one singular transaction. In this way, Vitalik is trying to speed up the transaction speed and enlarge Ethereum's capacity to try and meet the demand. Blockchain development is hard, and thus far, no solution has provided us with the outcome we need. Other blockchains have been created to try and compete by moving away from proof-of-work before Ethereum did and offer faster and cheaper networks. These rumored to be Ethereum killers are trying to take its place, but the fact is that none of them is as battle-tested as Ethereum is. One is down all the time, another has experienced an inflation bug, and yet another is too centralized, in my honest opinion. Innovating doesn't come without setbacks, and an obstacle all of them have to overcome is adoption. It takes time to attract developers and a decent amount of users to a new and empty blockchain from scratch. Some have gained a fair amount of adoption, but they are nowhere near overtaking Ethereum. That's why Richard Hart is taking another approach. He isn't trying to reinvent the wheel, and he certainly isn't trying to overtake Ethereum. The main reason he's building Pulse Chain is to offer a solution for his users and the outrageous gas fees. He wants his dApp to be worth utilizing for everybody, and according to him, the solution is horizontal scaling. There's no better way of explaining this than with a well-known example, McDonald's. In 1948, the McDonald's brothers developed what they called the Speedy Service System, where they offered easy, affordable, and fast food. As you all know, it turned out to be a huge success. But it wasn't until the businessman, Ray Kroc, that this invention turned into the multi-billion dollar company that it is today. He realized that the demand for this new model could be huge and would only be met by refining and replicating it everywhere. This process of simply copying and pasting a product is also called horizontal scaling. Imagine for a minute that McDonald's is McEath, a fast food restaurant on an island called Hexaco. 
As the love for McEath's menu grew exponentially amongst hexagons, one restaurant wasn't enough to cope with the demand of the entire island. There were only so many employees to serve customers and a limited amount of space to hold everyone inside the building. Every day, there was a huge lineup in front of McEath, causing frustrations to rise amongst customers. Mr. McTallick, the owner of McEath, decided to hire more employees, order more beef, and upgrade his machines. Unfortunately, he soon realized that these changes would have little to no effect to meet this exploding new demand as his building would hold only a certain amount of people. From the sidelines, two inventors and one businessman were watching McEath struggle to keep up and set out to solve this problem. The inventors decided to open up completely new restaurants. So, in addition to McEath, the island of Hexaco now had a Taco Soul and a Sub B&B. These restaurants started out from scratch and gained some traction because they were new, shiny, and they had some new thing called the drive through to serve customers faster. But their menu was different and the majority of Hexicans still preferred the food at McEath. So, although some people liked Taco Soul and Sub B&B, the congestion at McEath did not end. Then along came the businessman who saw how much people loved the McEath menu. He decided to open up another McEath location on the other side of the island with the exact same food and the exact same menu, just at a different, bigger location with the additional drive through to serve customers faster. Though not being the owner of McEath, he decided to call his restaurant McPulse. As time went on, more and more people started realizing that the food at McPulse was the exact same as the food at McEath. In addition, people were paying less to get served faster. Half of the overflow started going to McPulse, resulting in a more manageable demand at McEath. McPulse ended up getting way more adoption than Taco Soul or Sub B&B &B because it took a product the Hexicans already loved and simply scaled it horizontally. The end. So Richard Hart is taking an existing innovation that people already love and is refining it with a minimum number of changes. Instead of launching empty, He's hard-forking Ethereum's proof-of-stake network, which means not only the code being copied, but also all of its history, smart contracts, tokens, and NFTs while tweaking it here and there to make it faster and cheaper. It's a great way for dApps that are struggling with the high gas fees on Ethereum to come over on PulseChain. All truly decentralized applications will just work on PulseChain with minor settings adjustments. Every holder of any token or NFT on the Ethereum network will get a copy on PulseChain, making it the largest free airdrop ever. If you have a thousand SHIB in a wallet where you own the keys, you will get a thousand SHIB on PulseChain. You only have to change a single setting in your wallet to access them. These tokens will have their own value, and it's for the market to decide what that is. Some might not be worth a lot, but it's a great incentive regardless for people to check out this new network and come play with their free tokens. Something to bear in mind is that ETH holders will be getting PLS instead of ETH at a one-to-one -one ratio, as this is the native token on PulseChain. The initial supply will be airdropped to these ETH holders and to those who sacrificed for freedom of speech two years ago. The supply of Pulse Chain will be far greater than that of Ethereum, making the one-to-one -one airdrop to ETH holders relatively minimal. Yet, it will still be more than enough to make a free test run on the blockchain and cover for gas expenses. A fairly large portion of these transaction fees will be burned to lower the circulating supply. This mechanism will most likely have a positive impact on the value of the coin as roughly 25% of the fees is burned, which leaves around 75% to pay validators for securing the Pulse Chain network. To be eligible for the airdrop, you have to get your tokens off of centralized exchanges and send them to a wallet you own the keys to. In case the fork has already happened by the time you're watching this video, I'll gladly share another way to get some free tokens to play with. I'll place a link in the description to this faucet, which is a website that gives away free PLS for simply clicking a button.
You can do this every hour of every day. All you need is an empty software wallet like Aurox or MetaMask to connect to the site and the mindset to stay away from their casino games. I might have made the development of Pulse Chain sound way easier than it is as there's loads of complicated hard work going into achieving this. But at the end of the day, Pulse Chain will be a network that is a fine-tuned, secure, and battle-tested Ethereum copy that will be eligible for all of its updates in the future. Ethereum is a great invention by Vitalik Buterin, and Richard Hart is simply a businessman all about maximizing profitability by better serving his users. He knows how to transform great inventions like a simple time deposit into more useful and more profitable products for both him and his users, like Hex. That's exactly what he's trying to do with Pulse Chain while helping Ethereum to carry the load so both Vitalik and his own users benefit from this. Let me know in the comments below which one of these is working up your appetite or if you're simply sticking to McEath. Consider subscribing if this video was helpful and put on the notification bell for more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.